Hello everyone and welcome to Chronoswiss in Lucerne, Switzerland. We are here at the center of the Atelier Lucerne where modern mechanical is dreamed about, lived and created. My name is Patrick Hoffman and I have been part of the Chronoswiss experience for the last three years. I'm here with Oliver Epstein who is the CEO and the owner of Chronoswiss. Welcome. Thank you Patrick, thank you for being here. It's a pleasure knowing that there's a lot of people uh, watching us right now around the world. Thank you to the audience for supporting us. It's uh, quite challenging. It's a new environment. We're sitting here surrounded by cameras and a lot of cables. It looks like in the middle of an aircraft cockpit. So uh, very proud to be part of this first only digital exhibition um, that's organized from Watches and Wonders. And um, yes, as I said, Looking forward to our talk. At the beginning of this um, broadcast, we saw an intro showing a modern technology blockchain uh, here at the Atelier in Lucerne, where old traditional craftsmanship is being lived. Where is the connection? Well, Patrick, uh, the world is changing quite quickly today, and it's a constant battle for any brand to take the roots to the future. It's not about the blockchain that I want to explain and anyway, we probably wouldn't have the time for it. It's more about the philosophy of the blockchain that we here at Chrono Suisse embrace. The blockchain reflects the revolutionary space like nothing else today. It's about pioneering, it's about entrepreneurship. Secondly, the blockchain also stands for Nestical Compass. The creator of the blockchain is transparency, its accountability, its compensation, and its honesty. I hear the word value in this. Yes, these are the values uh, that stand for us here as a family company. Uh, these are the values that we brief and tick every day. It's uh, about humbleness. It's about who you are, but in particular, it's about where you come from. The taste and design differ over time, but the values that helped create my father's watch and my watch and which will create the next generation's watch are perpetuated over time, just like the blockchain. This is modern mechanical. What else links you to blockchain? Well, we always been fan of disrupting technologies. Uh, disrupting technologies that serve real needs. We have been one of the first or even the first one to adapt cryptocurrency as a payment method back in 2016. We then also created a series of cryptocurrency related watches with the trademark blockchain. And it's just recently that we teamed up with a young dynamic startup from the blockchain technology uh, called Glassnode and Rumor Design, and it's about the reinterpretation of an existing Opus chronograph, taking it to the next level. Talking to these startups, to this industry of blockchain, is just uh, propelling us to, to new heights. It's uh, incredible how they reinvent themselves every day, and uh, this mindset uh, is just beautiful, and uh, we try to do the same here. So there was an entrepreneurial input from the outside, from a customer. How do the existing customers react to this rather evolutionary design proposal which you have? The reaction is, is very positive. People like the combination of existing perpetuated design elements that we take into the future. Um, and this particular case, uh, talking about the Skeltec watch that we're going to have a, a look after, uh, it was a young customer who confronted us and said, well, I like what you do, I like the DNA, I like all these things that I have been living with for, for many years, but I want to see it in the next level. And he confronted us saying, well, I'd like to see a lighter case, I'd like to see the skeletonizing taken to the extreme, and also colors and patterns were part of our discussion. DNA? I think it's part of your responsibility to preserve the DNA of Chrono Swiss. What can you share about that? Well, that's an interesting question and I'm sure you 
can talk a lot about this. It's, it's a big step and it's a difficult one. It's about this thin red line you don't want to pass. Um, it's taking existing elements from the past and adapting them to the future. Of course, we have a bezel, we have an onion crown, which might be adapted a little bit, and you have other design elements that you want to come up in a different mood, but still going back to where you stood, where you're coming from. Absolutely true. So let's have a look at this scale tech, which we're showing you today as our novelty. It's pitch black, that's how we call it. It's this new lighter looking case from the outside with this open lux, that was the design brief. You still see the existing onion crown, you see the knurled bezel, which have been slightly adapted into the future. Then you see that you can look through the movement. It's completely transparent. We really took away what's not necessary. And I personally like very much these X-shaped uh, mechanics in here, this structure which holds the whole movement in place. The whole combination of the watch for me is uh, a nice example how to take it from an existing watch to the next generation. That's a rather revolutionary design for Chrono Swiss. Where do you come up with the uh, design ideas? Well, it's about openness, it's about creativity, it's uh, about curiosity, it's about the freedom that we live here in our company day in, day out. I think it's, it's about the mindset that you give to your people. And um, of course, it's learning about uh, new things from others. It's uh, learning from other colleagues, other companies, other technologies, but also from Mother Nature. And the design is an interactive process, as you know, and it comes from different corners. But it also, and in particularly, is a big and important question, who are your people? You want to have the right people. So for me, what I can hear here, it's, an, um, it's a team effort. This whole fun of creating new timepieces. Absolutely. We have a, a small team and uh, it makes a lot of fun creating these timepieces together. I mean, small team, uh, of course, um, it's also about the belonging to the Chrono Swiss company. It's about belonging uh, to the family and this is uh, what gives us a remarkable strength in coming up with new ideas. Uh, it's about embracing diversity and I can really say that when I look at my team I enjoy working with every single one of them uh, and it's sharing ideas and that's it's propelling us to, to, to ideas and new heights. I think at the end it also makes the, um, the customer part of the team I can truly say um, in today's situation in the watch industry that Chrono Swiss is one of a very few companies left which is independent, family owned, family run, where the CEO and the owner is the same person. How does that feel? That's very true. Uh, that's what we do since ever. We're a family company. The big companies might have a lot of professionalism in terms of operating procedures, efficiencies and so on. But I think for me, and I can say that passion and the knowledge about watches we have here at Chrono Swiss um, are at the pinnacle of, uh, of what can be done. Now, the customer is part. Where is the advantage of the customer for you being an independent company? Well, only when you support each other in-house, only then you can render the same excellent services to your, your partner outside. It's about working closely together. A product is only as good as the service that comes along. It's also about knowing your partner, his wishes, 
and, and I think even being proactive uh, approaching your customer. It is our utmost goal to learn from him, with him, and to make him happy. As a family company, this is essential. It's also about the short distances of information that are very helpful. I like to say it uh, in the following words, and maybe it sounds lame, but I think you want to provide the service to your customer that you would like to be given at the same time. And um, I think in the end, uh, as you often say, it's the back ends here, meaning that I'm the responsible one, and if something doesn't work, happy to take the call. So your customers, they know where to go to. I hope so, <laughs> yes. You know, when I walked into um, the atelier in Lucerne here for the first time about three and a half years ago, I immediately saw uh, that part of your colleagues still master and understand the technique of Kiosh. And that's something which fascinated me because you are the only company, uh, the only watch manufacturer that then puts this old traditional technology into a complete new face. Well, um, I think this combination of the Guilloche and the new designs is, is, a, is a wonderful thing to, to, to look at. Let's roll the tape and see what modern mechanical is. Ich denke, das ist nie langweilig, wenn man sie am Handgelenk hat. Es ist immer wieder äh, etwas Neues, anders. Ich kann mir vorstellen, dass man sie stundenlang anschauen kann. Immer wieder ein bisschen, ja. Das ist eine Beschichtung, eine spezielle. Und halt mit der Gilosch zusammen gibt es die Farbveränderungen. Ich finde, das, das gibt es nicht. Sonst nicht. Sonst ist es nur immer gleich. Es ist egal, ob hell, dunkel. Was ich sicher sehr spannend finde oder auch herausfordernd ist, dass man halt auf dem Zifferblatt arbeitet. Also wirklich auf dem Zifferblatt selber, wo ja sehr sichtbar ist nachher für einen Kunden. Also das ist wirklich sehr viel Handarbeit an dem Zifferblatt. Und auch nachher eigentlich bei den Urbauen tut man ja jede Schraube von Hand hineinschrauben. Das Höhenspiel muss eingestellt werden, bei jeder Uhr immer wieder neu. Was bei den Paribas neu ist, ist mit dieser springenden Sekunde. Also, dass die schön bei Null anfängt zu springen und bei 30 wieder zurückspringt. Ich finde es halt auch immer faszinierend, dass man halt auch etwas sieht an der Uhr. Dass ähm, die, die Räder ineinander hineingreifen und eigentlich so noch einen Zeiger antreiben. Und dass das eigentlich mechanisch auf dem Zifferblatt sichtbar ist. Auch unsere Glasböden, dass man das sieht. So kommt man noch so ein bisschen mit über, wie funktioniert es. Und nicht einfach nur hinter einem Zifferblatt verschwunden und man sieht es nicht. Es sind so kleine Details, oder ich sage jetzt kleine Es geht um Kleines und das bewegt aber Grosses. Also, ja. Oliver, you got something very interesting on your wrist. I can see a technology which was patented over 220 years ago. Tell us about it. Well, it's our new regulator tourbillon. Uh, very proud to, to finally holding this in my hand. We did a tourbillon watch 20 years back. Uh, tourbillon in itself is uh, something very special, but I think when looking at this tourbillon, it's something out of the ordinary, talking about the color and, and the look.
the idea was to keep it completely blue so the case is a is a coated blue we call it electrifying blue um, the tourbillon is at six o'clock going very nice in line with our regulator watches timepieces when you go into the dial you see the hand uh, blue dial you see a different shade of a darker blue on the breeches. You see these light lacquered hands. There's a different blue on the time indexes. So there's so many blue shades in this watch. I counted over 10, but the balance and the combination gives this uh, amazing look and, and uh, a reflection. So very, very happy to have hold this here and uh, happy to explain it further. Thank you for this explanation, Oliver. Also, thank you for sharing the view uh, of your vision and uh, what modern mechanical is. Anything else you would like to share with the community? Well, first of all, uh, I'd like to thank everybody for watching and, and being part of this, supporting us over the years. Uh, thank you, Patrick, for being here. It's difficult to actually present our passion for craftsmanship as you are not here with us physically. Uh, I'm very happy that we were able to use all these digital new means to, to show you and bring the message across. But sure, we're missing you personally. The corona threat might uh, go over, uh, or at least we might understand how to live with it. For me, it is important, you have seen these three watches today, different in design, different in mechanics, but most important, paramount, it is that you understand the underlying values and design that we do here at Chrono Swiss. This is modern mechanical. Thank you. Thank you again. We are now moving to the question and answer session. We move now over to the uh, question and answer setup. Still here, of course, in Lucerne, in the atelier, and here at the back we can even see the watchmakers. It is now time for you to ask questions, and we have the first one scrolling in. I have one here from Miguel de Sosa. Will we see the case from the Skeltec in other models with automatic movements instead of manual wind? Well, uh, the Skeltec Opus 2.0 um, will continue. We have now two new models, as you have seen. The idea is here to continue this model um, with uh, automatic movement. Of course, we need to take into consideration that the height is not growing too much. So we're looking into possibilities of having a micro rotor for the future Skeltec uh, watches. So yes, that's in the pipeline. I have a question here which comes from um, Portland, Ed. The newer designs are rather different to the past and somewhat polarizing. I'm sure many of your Chronosphere fans don't like the new designs. Well, the feedback so far is quite positive. Um, we're always trying to combine the past where our roots are, our DNA, and then combine it with this new modern mechanical approach not all, the col uh, not all the watches are completely colorful. It's uh, also some classical approaches to the new models. Um, we continue this way. That's the modern mechanical uh, strategy which we have decided to go on. And so far, we have also a lot of existing customers uh, who know the old models, but who adapted to today's Chronosphere's design. I have a question here from Stephen Foskett. He also sends his regards to Beat Weinmann. They must know each other. Uh, will Chronosphere still produce traditional watches like the classic Regulator? How does this fit into the new collection with these new stylish designs? Well, the, the Regulator is one of our most important designs and also the classic one. If you look at the current collection, uh, there are classic looking watches inside which are not so much tuned on, on colors. Um, it's important to have this base collection also continuing and uh, that's what we're going to 
do for the, for the future. It's really about taking existing design elements and continue to embed them uh, in, in new designs. But classic is still part of the, of the collection. Which just leads to the next question, which comes from uh, Singapore. I remember the successful series Opus and Delphis. What happened to them? Will you revive them? It's a good question and, uh, and a nice question because it shows that uh, people are still linked to some of our iconic pieces. Uh, the Opus, we just uh, showed you the scale tech and this was a design brief from an existing customer who said, listen, I want to have uh, Opus 2.0, so basically you can say there's many, many elements from the Opus that went into the scale tech. Uh, concerning the Delphis, uh, one of my favorite watches from the past, uh, we have ideas and we already have a project going about the Delphis bringing it to the next level. Uh, we're talking about next two years, so there's something in the pipeline. Staying within the product, I have here a question from Dan Andre Kluska. What made you come back to the Turbio? Well, it's just uh, the love to have a complicated timepiece. Uh, Turbio is something, it's always a feast to have this in, in your hands. And um, it was also a question of time to, to revive an old model. Uh, the old Turbio was uh, famous for the nice Guillaume, so it was uh, clear that we want to come up with a new type of Turbio and Guillaume, and that's how we came up with the Turbio completely in blue. The next one is related to Lucerne from a good friend of mine, Yajosh Sabu from India. Welcome. Hi. Um, he says, a Chrono Swiss is being based in Lucerne, not really the center of Swiss watchmaking locations. Is there a challenge or an advantage? in being in Lucerne? Well, Switzerland is not so big as you might know. Um, many of our suppliers are still in, in the Jura region, but uh, don't forget that uh, Lucerne uh, also has been and still is an important part for uh, watchmaking, talking about uh, the old guard of watchmakers here, uh, going back to Mr. Spöring, etc. Uh, so there's a lot of history about watchmaking in Lucerne. And for us, it's, it's our home turf, and uh, we also get uh, good feedback here directly from a lot of customers uh, being here in Lucerne, of course, the tourists. So it's, it makes sense for us to be here. We are switching a bit here. A question from Tony. I don't know where he comes from. How many watches do you produce? We are a niche brand. We are a family, a small family business. We produce between 1,500 to 2,000 watches. We have uh, decreased in watch production from 2014 onwards, where we decided to go uh, into more complicated watches, more handicraft watches. So this is the effect of this, uh, around 1,500 to 2,000 watches. We see that's the end of watches and wonders because somebody here is asking or is making a statement and says, it seems that green is the new blue, I guess referring to what we have seen with all the brands doing watches and wonders. What is your comment there? Well, I absolutely agree. That's what we have seen. But uh, I think we also have been at the forefront now with our new Paraiba watch, which goes into green. We changed from being very much focused on blue watches. And uh, well, I think we, we had the right strategy on this one. Blue, greenish, that's the way to go forward. I pick and choose here, staying with colors. Uh, there's a gentleman asking, what other colors do you have in mind after the Paraiba? Well, of course, uh, we already have some discussions going on. There was an interesting uh, talk some, some days back where somebody said uh, Guilloche and uh, he was from Namibia. So we're probably planning on having a color going more into the sandy kind of color, gold Namibian desert we have in mind with the Guilloche, the resemblance. So. That's probably something after the green. When will you produce your own movements? That's quite a straightforward question. It is, it is. We have now uh, in-house designed movement uh, for the Skeltec. We have an in-house designed movement for the Tourbillon. And we are now in the middle of the project where we are uh, looking at our own base movement, uh, automatic, uh, we're just in the, in the phase of um, doing the design brief. So it's, it's a question of the next 
24 months, I would say. Which leads to a follow-up question from Stephen Foskett. He says, uh, Chrono Swiss once specialized in updates of traditional movements in uh, brackets any car. Mm -hmm. Will this continue in the future? We used to do this and we still have old movements. I think it's always beautiful to, to have old movements that you redesign, you re, uh, re revamp and, and use them. So yes, there will be a couple of series of watches probably that we're going to use existing old movements, making the watch somehow uh, uh, the link to the past. But uh, obviously, as mentioned before, the, 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 the strategy goes into having our own base movement uh, that can then be applied to the regulator complications and so on. I have a question here which is related a bit to the global market. Where are Chrono Swiss main markets? Our home turf is uh, Germany, Switzerland, Austria still. That's where we come from. Uh, we have uh, important market shares in Asia such as Japan and uh, some other key markets are Middle East, uh, Mexico and, and the USA. That's, yeah, yeah, that's in a nutshell where mm -hmm. we are today. A uh, completely different topic. Uh, question comes from Philadelphia as a matter of fact. What is your plan with regards to CPO and how does Chrono Swiss watches hold their value? CPO, of course, we are talking about the certified pre-owned. Mm -hmm. Well, we have just sat, set up last year our own CPO kind of store. We have uh, become a lot of questions and people searching for old Chrono Swiss watches and they just want to have the, the warranty and the guarantee that it's well serviced, that they get the CPO uh, they can trust. So uh, this was an interesting uh, learning curve. Uh, it has, the, the demand has increased quite a lot uh, last year. And in terms of value, um, Yes, some of them are very sought after and I think if you can provide the proper quality and service with the watch, with the warranty, uh, that's what people are looking for. So, interesting space here. We are running out of time, Corona. How did you go through the crisis? Well, if you would have asked me last year, March, sitting here, uh, I couldn't tell you. I think in the end, 2020, we mastered quite okay. It was a hard year, um, but I think uh, having been set up with a new homepage uh, with all these digital means already at the beginning of the corona crisis, it helped us to approach the end consumer and uh, in, in a different way. So we got a lot of requests which we then could forward to our partners in the respective markets. Um, it it uh, propelled us to new heights also the corona crisis to some extent because we had to, to, to invest in uh, what we see here, digital, going digital. Um, yes, I think it was okay. And uh, talking about 2021, I see a lot of um, positive feedback so far, also because of our models, which are a bit of uh, different, truly unique. Uh, there's a request and um, I look forward for a positive year if there's nothing else coming up. We are running out of time and I'm glad I can ask this last question because I don't think we should answer it okay. in details. It comes from Torres Rodrigo. And now that you have presented the Turbi and the Skeltec, what other complications do you have in mind for the near future? So maybe you don't have to go too much into details there. No, we have a big portfolio of ideas, of course, uh, as you know, our team. Um, but there will be uh, some interesting moon faces coming up with a very nice design. That's probably something we can reveal now, uh, which is in not so far future. Well, we have come to the end of this question and answer session. Oliver, thank you very much for the insight. Thank you for asking the questions and for being with us uh, this afternoon. Thank you, Patrick, for being here. And, and thank you all for watching around the world and supporting us here. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks you. from Lucerne and bye bye.